So, what are they going to do about Daniil Hunter's contract? We should probably talk about that, and it's kind of complicated, so it's going to take a minute. Bear with me here on the Lockdown Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. Show is on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. Thanks so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the, the day. Uh, today, I want to get you. I want to get you to 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 stop panicking. <laughs> There's a lot of panic around. So the first thing I'm going to get you to stop panicking over is Daniel Hunter's contract. I have an article to that effect, too, if you'd rather read it and you need like visuals and stuff. Um, and also later in the show, I want to make I want to go over the panic over Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay retiring and stuff. There was a weird thing on Tuesday morning that I want to recap in case you see something from it. Um, so let's dive in first to Daniel Hunter and the headline here. Don't panic about his contract. You may have gone and logged on to one of the cap websites like Spot Tracker over the cap, and you may have seen that Daniel Hunter's cap hit projected for 2022 is $26.1 million. That's obscene. It's very high, even for a player of his caliber. That's insane. You may panic at this. You may look and say, wow, the Vikings are $15 million over the cap. This guy's 26. He hasn't played in two years. Maybe, you know, the wheels start tuning, right? Or uh, he's played, like, what, seven games in two years? The wheels start turning, right? That would be a pretty uncreative way to go about it. Here is my challenge to you. I think you can find a way, and we're going to do it together. We can find a way to keep Daniel Hunter in purple and also make his contract reasonable. And in fact, that way has been built into the contract from the beginning. And I've been saying this uh, a little bit, but let's go into this, the details and the specifics of it after I, I won't try to bog you down with numbers too much. Um, but when it comes to the salary cap, look, if you understand and love the salary cap and you are like super into the numbers and stuff, this is all going to make a lot of sense to you. I'll, t- I'll, I'll take care of those people first. If you aren't, um, stick around. But for the people who love the cap, here's the deal. There's an $18 million roster bonus, two void years on the end of Daniil Hunter's contract. So that means he has four years left on the life of his deal. So if they took that roster bonus and they converted it into a signing bonus, um, it would mean four and a half million over each of the next four years. That's way more manageable. Of course, the void year stuff gets a little weird in 2024. You have to like extend him into it or find something to do with dead cap or something like that. That's a little bit difficult, but that can, I mean, that's a problem that's two years away. So that's a problem you can kind of deal with when it comes. Um, For now, you can restructure that roster bonus pretty easily and get about 13 million off of the cap hit. And then suddenly it looks a lot more reasonable. You're basically cutting that cap hit in half. That ain't bad. Um, and then you actually get Daniel Hunter on 12 million and 13 million over the next couple of years and, and change. Um, and then the void year thing. So that's actually a really good deal for the Vikings. And that's the way the contract was meant to go in the first place. Okay. So for the cap experts out there, that's pretty much all you need. For the non-cap experts, for people who are confused by that, wait, what's a void year? What do you mean roster bonus, signing bonus? What's all that stuff? Let me take you through it step by step and how this whole thing works. But first, you got to understand the context in which this deal was signed. If you remember all last offseason, there were problems everywhere. There was he was maybe disgruntled. He was really unhappy with the amount of money he was making. And that made sense. He signed that deal three years ago. He'd made all pros since, right? Um, but complicating the matter, he had that neck injury and we weren't sure if that was going to re-aggravate. We still kind of aren't. Um, so there was all these complicating factors. They eventually got in a room, they sat down, they hashed something out. The thing they hashed out didn't even kick in until this year. So I think there is this weird thing. If you weren't like intimately familiar with the contract and why would you be, you may have logged onto the cap website and been surprised by this cap. Oh my goodness. Whoa, this is huge. And sometimes it's easy for us to like project that onto the team as well and say like we're surprised, say, whoa, the Vikings, that's really surprising. What are they going to do about it? And it is difficult to understand. And sometimes we can forget that the Vikings put that there on purpose and they knew what they were 
going for there. Now, a lot of the people are going to be gone, right? Rick Spielman's out of there. But I'm going to guess Rob Brzezinski has the cliff notes for what he's supposed to do with that contract. And maybe this was even his idea. And on the other end of things, this is the deal that made Daniil Hunter less upset with his contract. It's this. It's this big old roster bonus right here and what happens to it. And restructuring it um, is also part of that negotiation is saying, and by the way, we want you to give us consent to restructure your deal. And that was agreed to as part of that negotiation. So we are now just getting to the stuff that they agreed on. And nothing's really changed between the day of signing and, and now. If anything, Daniel Hunter got a peck injury and his value is is a little bit less, even though I don't think that kind of thing will linger. And if it were me, I wouldn't really factor that in much. All of this is to say, not only does Daniel Hunter not have any say in a, in a restructuring of a contract in this way, this is just converting one kind of money to another kind of money, and it accounts on the salary cap differently, but Daniel Hunter gets his checks pretty much functionally all the same. And on top of that... He wouldn't be unhappy with this. A restructure, if anything, is better for the player because it turns what would have been game checks into a lump sum at the beginning of the season. So he has more control over that big old amount of money and it guarantees that he sees it. So he would probably be really happy with this. The only way that Daniil Hunter sees less money than he signed on the dotted line for last offseason is if the Vikings cut him. And then the relationship doesn't really matter that much in that scenario, does it? Or if they trade him and then the relationship matters a little less. Of course, the Vikings could also trade him and then it'd be somebody else's problem. Again, we wouldn't really care about that. So all of this is to just clarify for everybody, because I've seen a lot of speculation. I have seen full on articles at what I would normally consider like places that are worth reading. Uh, really missed the boat on this. So let me reiterate all of this, and I want to make sure you understand cleanly and clearly. The options available to the Vikings are available with no negotiation with Daniil Hunter. He has already agreed to give the Vikings these options, and he wouldn't really care anyways. That is indisputable fact. That's not reporting or speculation. That is just how contracts work. And so this still might be confusing, especially if you're somebody who doesn't like to think in numbers. If you hear 18 million going into 4.5 million over four years through 2024 and your eyes just glaze over and you talk like there's a lot of people that just don't want to do the numbers thing. I have you. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Um, and I'm going to explain this. And I want to get you thinking about contracts in a way that isn't uh, necessarily bogged down in numbers. If that's not the way your brain works, think of it instead in options and in, you know, what can the Vikings do here? What's on the menu? What are the various levers they can pull? And then from there, you look and say, okay, which one do I like the most? That's the one I want them to do, and then see if that matches up, right? So we're going to get into that. First, um, let me tell you about Gramlin and Bet Online. Look, football season's over, but there's basketball. There might be baseball. That's kind of crazy. Go listen to like the Locked On MLB family of podcasts because there's some wild stuff going on there. Uh, there is the Olympics. You can even bet on your favorite Vegas casino games. All that you can find and more at betonline.net. It's your one-stop shop for all things grambling. You can bet on whatever sports, play your favorite casino games, and do whatever. It is the fastest and easiest way to find all of your scores, odds, news, everything you need to get a good gramble going. So head on over to betonline.net and get a grambling. Bet online where the game starts. Thanks again for making Lockdown Vikings your first listen of the day. Okay, so this contract is unorthodox. Now, when we think of a contract of this, of, of a, like a four-year deal on a player, you, see, you hear four-year, it'll make the numbers really easy, four-year, $40 million deal. And you think, okay, that's probably going to be $10 million per year, or maybe it fluctuates, but you think, okay, on average, $10 million per year. That's the value that I'm thinking in my mind, right? So for teams who are good at the cap, and the Vikings are one of, I mean, we know the reputation Rob Brzezinski has, has, right? And this is kind of why, because there are a lot of tools available to you, a lot of different ways to structure money that account them differently. And it allows you to reduce the burden of these contracts and sort of get away with murder every year. For the king of kings of this, look at the way the Saints have done things over the years. And if you really want to play with it, go to overthecap.com, go to their cap calculator, and just see how many years you can get away with getting the Saints under the cap without cutting anyone. You would be surprised how much you can do that with only restructures. Um, and so that's the way I'm going to put this. So the Neil Hunter's contract is comprised of a few old prorated bonus things from previous restructures. Those are that's all unmovable money, a very small base salary 
and a gigantic roster bonus, $18 million roster bonus. Now, like I said in the first one, um, don't worry about the numbers, but know that they can take that big old chunk of money and they can divide it into quarters and have each uh, of the next four years pay for one of those quarters. So now we got to talk about void years um, to make all of this make sense. A void year, you can think of it as a fake year. Um, 2024 and 2025, Daniil Hunter is not slated to be a Viking as of this moment. His contract would have expired, but they essentially signed him to zero dollar fake contract years that they then would intend to cut him uh, after the 2023 season. So if you think about it in the way that like if you sign somebody to an earnest four year deal and then cut him after two, you might be familiar with how like signing bonus prorated prorated signing bonus like accelerates and stuff. Each one of those quarter quarters of the big roster bonus um the two quarters that go in 2024 and 2025 would accelerate and the vikings would have to pay them all at once the second they cut him void years is essentially planning to do that it is basically agreeing to a contract ahead of time that says this is how this is going to work we're going to sign you to a four-year deal then cut you in the middle of two of it um so functionally it's a two-year deal but we're going to account it differently and so to the player from the player's perspective it's all the same because the signing bonus actually changes hands immediately on signing um that's they get access to that money immediately they can do lump sum right in their bank account if they want their payment structure however they want but if it's the payment structure they choose, they can have that lump sum hit their bank account immediately on signing, but the actual salary cap charge shows up differently in different years. The player doesn't give a crap about that, though. Why would he? Why would he? So void years are a trick to essentially give you more space to spread out signing bonus. That's kind of the point of them. That's what the Saints have been doing for a long time with that that stuff. You just spread it out further over further years. And yes, at the end of the contract, you got a problem to deal with, but you can sign him to an extension and just say, hey, those years that were void years, let's make them real years. And we'll just have the, that prorated bonus charge be part of the next contract. Um, or they can just take their lumps. Maybe 2024 is a really bad season or something's really bad. And they just take their lumps and get out of it. Either way, it's sort of a future Vikings problem, and I'm not too worried about it yet. We can talk about that when that comes. Cross that bridge when you come to it. So that's the option that I am advocating for here. Restructure Daniil Hunter's contract, turn that roster bonus into a signing bonus, and his cap hit will be really manageable over the next two years. You got a problem in 2024, you can deal with in 2024. If you do that, in 2022, Daniil Hunter will cost about as much as John Franklin Myers does for the Jets. It's really, really manageable. And it's why I was like, man, that's like not actually that much money. For all the fuss that was made that last offseason, he wasn't promised all that much money. But here's where I'll get into the, the basics of the option here. The, the Vikings agreed to add $18 million to Daniil Hunter's contract over the next two years. And then in 2024, he can either walk, be a free agent, we'll renegotiate, whatever, we'll deal with it. But 18 million more dollars. There you go. You wanted more money, you got more money. Here's 18 million dollars. However, because we don't trust your injury status and the neck thing is weird, we're going to put it in the form of a roster bonus that we can then get out of. So we can cut you a day before the roster bonus actually triggers and turns into guaranteed salary, which is what happens on March 21st. It will go from an $18 million bonus to an $18 million guaranteed piece of salary. And if the Vikings don't want to do that on March 20th, they can cut or trade Hunter or get rid of it or whatever. And um, they can be out from under it. And Daniel Hunter agrees to this because in that scenario, he probably doesn't want to be a Viking at that point. Anyway, if you guys don't want to pay me, I'll go find somebody who can and I'll test the market. He'd be happy with that. So they agree with that. Imagine they had signed him to an earnest extension that just tacked four and a half million dollars onto each of the next few years. And then they said, OK, all that new money, we're going to gather it all up. And we're going to essentially give ourselves a kill switch that we can hit in March of 2022. In case this isn't working out, we can hit the eject button and cancel out all of this and actually get out of the contract. That is essentially it. So remember when I said, think about it in options instead of dollars. The options are cut Daniil Hunter and he doesn't get any of the money that you agreed to last season. Trade him, and he gets that money from somebody else. Sure, get your big draft picks and stuff. And by the way, if you trade Daniel Hunter, people are like, well, maybe we get a third rounder for him. Nah, 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 nah. He's an elite edge rusher who is making as much money as, like, Bradley Chubb. Nah, that is an absolutely insane asset. That is Khalil Mack package. That's two first-round picks. I don't care about the injury history. It is an insane thing to trade Daniel Hunter for anything less than, like, a first and a lot more. The thing about the contract is that in 2023... There's $8 million in liabilities 
for Daniil Hunter. That is less money than Carl Nassib is making with the Raiders in 2022. It's around the same amount of money as like Danico Autry is making. That is an obscenely low cap hit for 2023. It does not make any sense to, to eat a $26 million cap hit in 2022 and then an $8 million one next year. Why wouldn't you even that out a little bit? So assuming you want to keep Daniil Hunter in the building and you don't have some ridiculously weird take about how he's actually not that good, um, or assuming you're not totally turned off by the injury history, which is a much more reasonable thing, although I would still disagree with you. As long as you want Daniil Hunter in the building, you should understand that the contract is not a barrier to that in any way, shape, or form. What you need to understand about the contract is that it is meant to be restructured. It was designed for this button, this spread all the money out button, to be pushed or for the eject button to be pushed. It was designed with a fork in the road here, and the Vikings now have to choose. Do we or do we not want to keep Daniel Hunter on the roster? If we do, it's easy. If we don't, it's also easy. That's why this contract is genius, and also why I kind of think Daniel Hunter and his agent got fleeced by this contract. I don't think his agent has done a very good job of representing Daniel Hunter and getting him paid the money that he's worth. The other thing I want to talk to you about is... I just want to recap the Kevin O'Connell thing. It is clearly blown over. Um, there might even be an announcement by the time you hear this, but some people are getting a little nervous that Kevin O'Connell hasn't like officially become head coach yet. And I want to talk to you about that and maybe just talk people off the ledge a little bit. So I'm going to talk to you about Built Bar and then I'm going to talk to you about that. Built Bar is the number one protein bar on the planet. It's so delicious. It is fantastic. Covered in 100% chocolate. Tastes like a candy bar. If you're trying to be good, and, you know, maybe uh, get get ready for beach season because that's coming up in four months. And that's enough time to maybe, you know, could do a little plan and, and get yourself going, lose or maintain weight. Built Bar is perfect. You can wake up in the middle of the night wanting something chocolatey. Built Bar can satisfy that craving. And you're going to want to eat these. These are not things you settle for. These are things you go for because they're delicious. They even have Built Puffs, which are like marshmallowy and delicious. They come in all sorts of great flavors. There's like a marshmallow churro one, which is awesome. Um, of course, the main series flavors like chocolate caramel, chocolate orange, chocolate raspberry, coconut cookies and cream. So delicious. So head on over to Built.com. Get one of these. There's like 130 calories in these bad boys. So get yourself a box. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 to get 15% off of your order. And do yourself a favor. Go get some Built Bar at Built.com. Okay, theme of the show, stop panicking. And the thing that panic that we panicked over on Tuesday was pretty silly. It was uh, the, the weird Kevin O'Connell stuff. So you may have seen some sort of notification if you are on Twitter, if you are on social media, you may have seen something weird about this or a YouTube video or something. So I just want to clear this up. Kevin O'Connell, there is absolutely no indication that Kevin O'Connell will back out or not become the, the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. There is nothing. The journos looked into it, Ben Gessling and even like the, the national people like Rappaport, Schefter, all those guys, they all looked into it and said, nope, this is still totally, absolutely happening and everything is totally on track the way that they thought it would be. So I'm going to say that out right at the outset. So why do, do I feel compelled to say that? I thought this was a, a done deal. Well, if you missed it because you went outside on Tuesday, good for you. Let me catch you up. Uh, so it, you may have seen reports on the day of the Super Bowl, that Sean McVay is considering retirement. And it sounds like he is genuinely mulling retirement right now. Um, or, you know, going into a cushy media job or taking a year off or something. You know, the, the job, it takes a toll on you, even though he's not even 40. Um, he's He's been on record saying, like, I'm not going to be the kind of guy that coaches till I'm 60. So uh, who knows what's next for Sean McVay. But the the thought process might be easy. It might be easy to make some jumps here. Now, there has been no report that any of the next things that I'm going to say are even being thought about. But it's really easy to, to assume, to be like, well, if Sean McVay is gone, somebody's going to have to be the head coach in L.A. Wouldn't that guy be Kevin O'Connell? Oh, no. And to sort of fl fly down that path of speculation. But there's been no report that if Sean McVay retired, that Kevin O'Connell would even be the coach. It might be Raheem Morris. It might be an outside hire, right? That might do something totally different. Um, so you have to jump to that conclusion. And then you have to jump to the conclusion that Kevin O'Connell would actually do that, would agree to the Vikings, halfway get a staff in place, and then balk and say, ah, actually, I'm going to stay with the Rams. 
Um, that's not a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination. And in fact, with the, the way the Rams are, if, you know, Aaron Donald leaves, they've got a bunch of other pending free agents. They've got a tr- uh, struggle in cap space, no draft picks. I don't know if you'd want to go take over that team right now. They kind of went all in and it's going to be really hard to keep that band together. Um, so I don't know what Kevin O'Connell would do if it came to that, which it won't and isn't. And, is, and there is no report that that is even a possibility. So to get to this, you really, really have to leap. But if you've already made all of those leaps and you've assumed that McVeigh will retire and that Kevin O'Connell would be the guy the Rams want and that Kevin O'Connell would choose the Rams over the Vikings, um, if you assume all of those things are true, none of which are probable or even like plausible, some of them, also the timeline has to work out. And I think this is always going to be the biggest barrier. So this is why I'm begging you. Critical thinking skills. This is where we put on our critical thinking hats and we ask, how does this actually play out? Basically, the Vikings need their head coach to start doing stuff soon. And the report is that they told Kevin O'Connell, hey, if you win the Super Bowl, go to Disneyland, go do your parade. We'll we'll get you going on Thursday. So go spend a couple days, be with your family, celebrate, right? We get it. That's totally cool. See you on Thursday. The Vikings told that to Kevin O'Connell, according to reports from multiple pe- reputable places. So if you're wondering why there's a delay, that's why. Because he won the Super Bowl and he wants to celebrate a little bit. And the Vikings said, yeah, that's fair. Cool. Sure. We're all good. Nothing wrong with that. And so the plan was to announce it on Thursday. So we didn't know that the plan was to to announce it on Thursday, because I don't think the Vikings figured they would have to announce when they would announce the thing. So, but I guess that wasn't the case. So for, if Thursday is going to be the day, what would have to happen here is Sean McVay would have to decide he's retiring like today on Wednesday um, or basically like on the podium. He would have already had to have decided or he has to decide on Wednesday and then all the other stuff has to happen and all that other stuff has to transpire in like an hour. Like the timeline for this is completely insane. So if the timeline works out and if Sean McVay actually does retire after all, and if the Rams pick O'Connell and if O'Connell picks the Rams, like all of those things have to happen. And then the Vikings would be left without a head coach and they would probably go back to their list. They'd maybe call it Patrick Graham or Raheem Morris or something like that. And that would be the case. There was a ton of panic. There were articles, videos, social media posts about it. And I think really the thing that got people going was apparently on uh, on the radio on KFAN at some point, Paul Allen said uh, that he was going to go to some media event on Friday and then they told him not to come to it. And I don't know what that media event was or why Paul Allen was told not to come or maybe they're rescheduling or whatever. Whatever it was, people ran with that and immediately jumped to the conclusion that that had something to do with all this Kevin O'Connell stuff. There was no indication of that. There was no report of that. It was just a thing that people assumed, because I guess if you think about it and squint hard enough, it makes sense. And the reason I'm bringing up all of this is because, my dear listener, I want to take care of you, and I want you to take care of yourself. You don't have to work that. If you have to work that hard and make that many leaps and that many unlikely assumptions to come to a conclusion, it's probably not worth panicking over quite yet. And if it is worth panicking over, some of those unlikely things will happen ahead of time. And then you can go at that point, you can go, whoa, 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 there's there's some real steam to this. And so if you and I, dear listener, we want to have a, a, a more enriched experience of enjoying sports. That means when these sort of sagas happen, when we're watching like Hawks refreshing our Twitter pages every two seconds to see if Jim Harbaugh comes into town or to see what happens with McVeigh and O'Connell, um, we should probably think critically about it and think, how logical is this? Does this make sense? And are the things that I am like convincing myself have happened, are they reported? Are they... 10% likely? Are they 20% likely? Are they 70% likely? Or is this a 2% outcome thing that I've really only convinced myself is going to happen because it was, it would hurt my feelings and the Vikings hurt my feelings a lot. The fact that the Vikings, especially a previous iteration of the Vikings have hurt your feelings before an iteration of the Vikings run by different people, managed by a totally different people, different players, different coaches, different everybody. Those people may have hurt your feelings before. It doesn't really bear at all on if these people are going to hurt your feelings. And I feel like that's like, pretty obvious, but it, I think warrants saying out loud because I think we can get wrapped up in the moment a lot. This is my stop panicking little rant for you. If you can think critically about situations, I promise you following the Vikings will become less stressful and more enjoyable. And that is all I want for you. 
I just want you to enjoy the sport more than you, than you otherwise would if you didn't know about Locked On Vikings. And to that end, thanks for hanging out for this. Uh, tomorrow, I'll try to go more into a football-y topic. I don't know. I might do some scheme X's and O's. Might talk more about cap stuff or something. It is kind of cap season, free agency season, um, and we're going to get really deep into that over the next month, so I hope you guys stick around for that. In the meantime, check out the Locked On Bets podcast. Handicapping expert Lee Sterling and your boy Q, they'll help you get your grambles straight. I will see you all tomorrow, and as always, skull.